Hi guys, Avi here, and in this series of videos, we're gonna be creating our very own Django application. So if you guys don't know what Django is, Django is a framework that you can use with Python to create websites, manipulate databases, you have a fantastic admin, admin tool, and so on. The power of Django is tremendous. Um, I personally am learning every day what Django is and how it works, but in these series of videos, we're basically gonna create a very simple polls application. So let's get started. In this video, we're going to learn how to get our requirements and create the basic Django project. The first thing you need is Python. Um, www.python.org should have Python. Go ahead and go to downloads and you want to download Python 3.5. Hopefully you already have it installed because, you know, I wouldn't recommend doing Django without having Python already. So once you have Python installed, we're going to need an IDLE. Um, in the previous few lectures, if you've seen, I use the normal Python IDLE that it comes with, but with Django at least, some IDLEs make life a lot more easier. So the one I use is going to be PyCharm, and I highly recommend using it because throughout this entire video and the next probably all my videos, I'll be using PyCharm as my main IDLE. So go ahead and just search PyCharm download, open it up. Again, it's compatible for Windows, Mac OS X, and Linux. So you shouldn't have a problem installing it. Make sure to download the community edition. I don't want you guys paying for anything. Download community and you should be set. I'm gonna cancel mine because as you can see, I already have mine right here. But once it's downloaded, you should be all ready with the requirements. Awesome. Now the next step is we want to create our Django project. And honestly, it shouldn't take us too much time. So go ahead and open up PyCharm. Again, PyCharm is an ideally that we require. It has a lot of functionality and it's very easy to use. So go ahead and select create a new project. And it has two things we need. First of all, it asks for the name. So I'm saving mine in my documents and I'm gonna call mine um, first project or first proj, whatever. And for my interpreter, make sure it's your Python version. So as you can see, it has Python 2.6, Python 2.7 and Python 3.5 please make sure that you're using Python 3.5 or maybe even 3.4. If you don't want to upgrade, that's absolutely fine, but just make sure it's the most recent version. Hit create and that should create our PyCharm project. Go ahead and close the tip. Let me just um, expand this, make this a bit bigger. Awesome. So this is the whole PyCharm interface. On the left-hand side, you can see your files and folders. Over here, we have first proj. Um, there's nothing in it right now. You have your external libraries. If I want to open a file, I double click. Okay, if I do double on the click on the file, I can see stuff. And at the bottom, we have something very neat. We have the Python console, we have the terminal, and then we have some to-do stuff. Don't worry about that. What I want you to do is head over to your terminal. Again, it's at the bottom of the screen or the bottom of your interface. And over here, type the following command. So what we want to do first is we want to install a virtual environment. And the reason why we're doing this is because if you have multiple projects, right, you will end up installing Django in every single project and that's going to take up a lot of space on your computer. So it's better to always create a virtual environment whenever you're dealing with Django so that what you can do is install any, you know, modules you need inside of that virtual environment so that it doesn't take up space on your Mac, on your computer, machine, etc. So what we want to do is using pip and again, pip comes pre-installed in Python 3.4 and Python 3.5. So you should have this install installed. Do pip3 install and then the module name. So the module that we're installing is a virtual env. So go ahead and hit this pip3 install virtual env. Awesome. It says requirements already satisfied. Um, the reason why it's saying this is because I've already installed it, but in case you haven't, go ahead and do this. Now the next step is to actually create our virtual environment. Right now, all we've done is we've installed the module. So the command to actually create the virtual environment is going to be the following. Go ahead and type in your terminal virtual env dash p and then python3 and then your environment name. So whenever I'm creating a virtual environment, I always use env. I suggest you do the same. Again, it's gonna be virtual env dash p python3 env so you should see running virtual env installing setup tools and we're done so now if you open up your first project you immediately see this env folder and that's basically 
our virtual environment that's been created. However, there's one more step we have to do, and that is we have to activate our virtual ENV. So to activate it, it's actually quite simple. Go ahead and type in source env bin activate. <clears throat> that basically goes into the folder. It activates it, and you should now see env in brackets right before your terminal um, command. So we now have env in brackets. That just tells us we're now in the environment, the virtual environment. One last thing we have to do with this whole VE stuff is we have to change the interpreter. We have to let PyCharm know that we want to install all our modules, all our packages inside of the virtual environment and not anywhere else. So go ahead and PyCharm preferences and inside of preferences, head over to, I believe, project, first proj, and then project interpreter. Once you're in the project interpreter, right now, as you can see, we have all these, all this stuff. Go ahead and change it to the environment we just created. Users, whatever it was, slash env, slash bin, slash python. Select that. And now, as you can see, it's changed the environment in which we're working in. So hit apply. Okay. Fantastic. So let's quickly recap what we've done so far. We installed virtual env. We created our virtual environment. We activated it, and then we told PyCharm to change our environment, which is fantastic. Now, the last thing we have to do is, now that we have our virtual environment, we have to install Django. So we don't have to use pip3 anymore since um, the virtual env knows what we're doing. So just say pip install Django. Fantastic. It's collecting. It's installing. And we should see the success message. Awesome. Successfully installed Django 1.9. That's the version of Django I have. I believe 1.8 and 1.7 do work with this um, with these videos. So if you have an older version of Django, that's fine. But anyways, that's it for this lecture. All we did was we set up our Django project, and that honestly didn't take up too much time. But in the next video, we'll go ahead and understand the coding part. So what exactly is required to create that Django application? How do we make our project? How do we make our app, etc. Again, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.